So what happened at this particular chicken slaughterhouse? So I think it was in 2015. Yeah. Um, there was a couple of incidents where the electrified water wasn't working properly. Yeah. And so some slaughterhouse workers had some arguments over how to cut the chickens' throats. And in the end, it resulted in 82 chickens being boiled alive over a nine month period in 2015 with the previous owners of the slaughterhouse. Oh my God. Yeah. See, if she's still eating animal products, you're putting that suffering and pain inside of your body. It's just unnecessary. The options now are amazing. You don't need to put that inside of your body. We're paying for this with our dollar. We're supporting it with our wallets. So, those poor babies, eh? Oh, look at you. Hello. Look how white the. What's that called on the top of the head? Do you know the little red thing? It's supposed to be red. Oh, darling. Look how scared they are. They're crammed in here as well, hey? Yeah. You're allowed up to 9,000 chickens per truck. Sorry? You're allowed up to 9,000 chickens per truck. It's a legal maximum. 9,000 per truck. Look at this. 9,000 per truck. Look at this guy, how anemic they are. Look at how scared and anemic they are. Only babies too. Were these six weeks old? S six weeks old, these are little babies. This is what we're paying for. Yeah, mate. So they're crammed in that truck there, absolutely crammed. It stinks, they're in their own filth. And this is what people are paying for when they get a chicken burger, a chicken wing, KFC, any of that. This is what you're paying for. It's horrible. Absolutely disgusting. This look white and anemic. No, not healthy at all, scared. Little baby, six weeks old is a baby. Probably got one of these in a city near you, hey? Consumers are paying for it. What state <laughs> So I've just been told this is now Halau slaughterhouse. They used to stun them with the electric water, but now they're just slitting their throats to quiet their conscious, and they do up to 60 to 100,000 a day. That's massive. I thought I'd politely ask you, welcome to say no, of course you, you will if you want to, but can I ask for an interview? Um, about about the uh, slaughterhouse and the reality of it and what your thoughts are on it? I, no, I can't. I can't get involved. So even side, even you know. if we're talking about just diet, diet related stuff like sandwiches, food, like we don't talk about the political side of it. Mm. Um, no. No, that's fine. But Oh, Appreciate that. I understand your position though, because yeah, I just know my boss will sit on there and say, right, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're getting shit for it. I can block your name, your face, and everything yeah. out. <laughs> no, he has to remain impartial. He doesn't want his boss to see it. Yeah, but he was. Re you're right. He was really polite. You show them a slaughterhouse and. <laughs> They don't want to eat that. No, of course they don't. Yeah. It's yeah. not an ideal situation, but yeah. the world is not ideal, unfortunately. It's a pretty scary place when you when you see it, so. Yes. This is how we treat the most vulnerable, innocent beings on earth. We put them and stuff them in these big trucks and send them to a slaughterhouse for five minutes in your mouth. And these people here are speaking out about it. The minority. I don't think she's breathing, eh? No, no, the one behind isn't the one nah. in front. Oh. It's a little bit, look. 
The one in front How looks like they died. Yeah, but I don't know. They didn't stack it properly. They probably just missed. I felt like I couldn't cry because I had every emotion. I was scared and I was angry and I was sad and and none of it came out. And then I just <coughs> was it their eyes? Yeah, and I think it was just I saw their eyes and yeah, it felt like they were looking at me and I think. So all this unnecessary violence, so unnecessary. I can't believe we live in a world where we have to do this. We have to stand up for this. Like, what is going on? Like, we should not have to explain to people why it's wrong to do this to animals. Same place. Oh, I used to eat that. Yeah. Me too. We all did. So we owe them something, don't we? Yeah. We have to speak out for them otherwise, because we were complicit in their suffering. Yeah. Now you see why the, uh, the activists are pretty passionate. Yeah. So it's, it's not a diet. <clears throat> I'm going to, like, change my life. Yeah. There's things we can all do. Yeah. You, know, you know, just find out what type of um, activism feels right for you. I mean, yeah. it's not not all types of activism are for everyone, but you know, you, you'll find what you're good at and what you feel comfortable doing. And um, yeah, because I think I told you, like, I've always wanted to do like something, and I've told you, and, and I shouldn't feel like this, but it's like if I mention something, they're like, oh, she's going on about her thing. You know, like yeah. it's such a there's such a negative. Like attitude towards it. Yeah. Um, but I don't care anymore. I don't care. Yeah. There's more important things than what how care. other people feel, isn't it? Yeah. How, the, the animals feel a bit worse. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think one day, hopefully, like everyone will realise that we see that they have a life as well. Yeah. Or with your help, maybe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I need. I'm going to make a change. I'm, yeah. I said, like, I'm going to make a big change. Wow. Amazing. I think I look very happy. Hello. Hey, mate. You are against violence, and you would put yourself on the line, or even if you wouldn't, but you're against violence happening to an innocent person. Mm -hmm. And then later in that day, you pay somebody else to stab an animal in the throat. Do you not find that a hypocritical way of living? And if you do find that to be a hypocritical stance, that one violence is justified against innocent being and the other is not, then if you do see that there's some hypocrisy in that, do you feel a moral obligation to amend that as best as you can? Perhaps I need to think about it more, James. Yeah, cool. Sweet. That's a great answer. I feel like I have, like, a, like I said, people around my life have gone vegan since yeah. I had, like, my best friend and yeah. my student and things like that. And I'm realising now, like, how amazing that is, but... You feel like you could have done a little bit more, maybe? Or yeah, I feel like, yeah, with my family, I feel like I could have done more. Oh, but you, you, I think you have done a lot because yeah. you've also encouraged me most of your family, friends, and without you, I wouldn't have been doing this for two days. I wouldn't be there at the vegan festival, so you have done something. So, we're actually still filming, but you're not on the camera. But we actually met you guys at the vegan camp out, right? Yeah. Hopefully this is still recording, because this is really important. 
and we met you and you were a non-vegan when you come to the camp out and you got a really um, good information download from there, didn't you? <laughs> You're actually not on camera, it's just your voice. Yeah, I did. did. I think at first she saw this as she came for education yeah. and to learn. I don't. I don't think she actually had full intentions to go vegan. Definitely yeah. not. And then after, she learned after being there and experiencing everybody's view and energy. It just made me think twice. Wow. And now you're at a vigil two days into your exactly, journey. Exactly. Wow. wow. I know. Vegan's been vegan for a long time and well I was vegan an activist for two years before I went to my first vigil. I actually had wow. to do it myself in my own town because mm. yeah but that's amazing. What are you thinking? Are you thinking it's something you might turn back from or is this, oh, no, is this definitely it? Not. Definitely not. I will try my hardest to continue with this mm. especially after all the information that I have and you know there's all different types of foods to choose from. And yeah, she knows now. She's seen, she's tasted stuff here. Exactly. I can't help myself now. Vegan pizza wow. It's better than... I don't understand why people do it. Yeah, I mean, it's I unnecessary, isn't it? Yeah. I think she also realised how... Um, what a positive movement it is. Yeah. You know, I think... Like saving the lives of others that we connect to. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. It's different to what you thought veganism was? I think before I didn't really give it a second thought. Well, because some of my family members they are vegetarians. Yeah. But no, I didn't really give it a second thought. But then, obviously, after coming here, you see what it's about now. Yeah. Now, <laughs> come on, give us a hug, you two. You two are amazing. Thanks so much for coming. All right, so those, those two ladies there I met at the vegan camp out and one was really nice and she brought her non-vegan friend along and from the vibe of the camp out, the information and polite approach of the activists and the vibe of all the vegans. She had a really good experience and she's been two days vegan and she's already at her first vigil. It's a really important thing, this just highlights how important facing the victims of our food choices is for and it's even important for activists if you can if you can build up that courage to, to to see the victims you're fighting for it just builds that conviction in you stronger so these save movements are really important especially for vegan activists and if you can get a non-vegan to come to one that would be even more amazing so 